días. Hoy tenemos aquí en el seminario del Centro de Investigación Operativa al profesor Thomas Hobsa. El profesor Hobsa eh, trabaja en la Universidad Politécnica Checa de Temprano, en el Departamento de Estadística, y lleva muchos años eh, haciendo investigación en dos campos, uno el de la teoría de la información estadística y el otro en estimación de áreas pequeñas. Dentro de este segundo campo, hoy pues, nos va a hablar de una de sus recientes investigaciones. Eh, profesor Hobsa, bienvenido, y cuando quiera puede empezar la charla. Muchas gracias, Domingo. Bueno, aunque hablo un poco de español, en matemáticas me siento más cómodo en inglés, o en como pienso, pero voy a hablar de la inglés y la conversación. Bueno, primero, me gustaría agradecer a ti por la oportunidad de tu interés y, por supuesto, por el financiamiento de trabajos que has hecho para este proyecto. So today I would like to present some results for the use of the drone for this drone, and then we will get into this more explanation of some other proposals. So the outline of the talk, I will give some brief introduction on what this more area of this our aim to do, and then I will present in the first two models. The first more simple model is the Olympic model without time effects. And then uh, there will be more complicated models with uh, independent kind of For both models, I will present some simulation experience to study the behavior of the estimators and the predictors, and I will present also some applications to real data. At the end, I will do some conclusions. So let us start with some small introduction. Let us assume that we have some finite population uh, U of size N. And this population is partitioned into several subsets, let's say G subsets, which we will call domains or areas. These subsets will have some sort of uh, population size in particular and one in particular and D. This domain could be geographical domain, could be some uh, social, social, economic, economic domain, and so on. And assume there is some variable of interest, why? In our case, we will uh, study for example the poverty, so the variable y will take on the value of zero one. One is the individual zero poverty line and zero in the other case. So this is one example of what should be the variable of interest. And our target is to estimate the means of variable y in the domain or the area. So if we denote to y j the value of the variable of the J individual in domain D, then our variable of interest is this sample, it's not sample, but of course it's this mean. So this is the mean value from the population in domain D. So this we would like to estimate. Of course we have some samples, so we assume we have some samples from the population, and each C in each domain D, we have sample of size to more than D. And on the, on the basis of the sample, we want to estimate the property of the whole population in the area. Okay, it often happens that uh, if we take the sample from the whole population, then in some domain, we can have very small sample size. So this is problem for the estimation. And the basic method can, can, uh, can uh, Cannot work very well with this case. So, the basic approach, which we can do the most in this way, how to estimate the quantity, is so called direct estimator, which is estimator, you choose only data from the domain, from the sample in the domain. So, as the as a, uh, data comes with very strong design, design, design based studies, the direct estimator can be calculated in this form. This is, in fact, the basic mean of the observation from the sample from area B, where WBJ are some in place of uh, units within each domain. If we suppose, for example, just simple random sampling without replacement, replacement then these rates are determined by this uh, and the data estimator is just mean of our observation in the area. So we estimate 
victory on the whole population by the means of, the, of our comfort and the world. So, this is why we call the area small area of small domain. So, small area for it is such area where the direct estimator does not have enough precision. So, we have, we have not enough data to give, to give uh, enough precision to our direct estimator. What does it mean, enough precision? For example, the Spanish statistical office allows maximum coefficient of variation of 20,000. So the variability of the estimator should be at most 20,000. So this is the basic approach, the direct estimation. The other possibility is to use some more complicated indirect estimator, which are using some statistical models to borrow strength from data collected from other areas or from other time period, or they take into account all the optimal data from some administrative register or some data from the last census and so on. Uh, it depends on you know, which type of data we have in our disposal. So, if the optimal data are available only in the ARA level, so we have only the aggregated data, then we call the model ARA level model. If we have the data available for all individuals, for the population, or for the sample, then we call the model to be in our model. So we have data for the individual in our population. So in our case, we are treating the second case. So the two models I will present today, all, both of them will be unit level models. So, this is the introduction, what we want to estimate, this is the sound, this is the mean, and let us start with the first model. So, as our uh, aim is to estimate policy proportion, our variable of interest, y, is binomial. So, it can have only vary 0 or 1. So, our, our assumption of the model is that the variable of y in area D of the individual J, condition to some random effect is very new solution with some probability of J. And as we have uh, given our data, we will employ generalizing our model. We use the logistic regression, so we use the logic function. And here we have some vector, some scoring, vector of our parameter data, and this is place where the random effect takes part. So this random effect, in fact, allows some variability between domains. So here we have some regression parameter, which is the same, the data is the same for all the populations. And this term allows some variability between domains. And we assume that this term is random. They are independent, uh, they have standard normal distribution. And another condition is that the variables y are independent conditions to random distribution. So we have unknown parameter beta and unknown parameter c, which stands for variance of our random vector. These parameters have to be estimated. So, in this case, we use, uh, we use the method of simulated moment, which was proposed by Jan in the paper of the American Statistical Association. And it's based on simulation, simulating the moment of our function. The problem here is that if we include the random regression, then the localized use function contains uh, integrals which cannot be solved explicitly. So we have to approximate the integral. So one possibility is to approximate the expectation by the integral of the and to use this method of simulation model. So I will not go into detail on the same parameter. So this is our model. And our parameter of interest, as I said, was this one, the mean of the population. So in this case, we will make it a simpler, simpler, and we will assume this parameter. So this is the mean probability that the variable y takes value 1. In fact, from the last law of large number for large uh, size of the population, this one is higher approach to each other. So, since we have some problems with uh, continuous variables, I will explain it later more in detail. Let us suppose for now that our coverage are categorical. It means that the coverage for individual J in area D can take only K finite number, K possible values. So we have K vector Z. 
and this is the only possible area for civil values of the solar area. Uh, so this is the so-called solar area factor. In this case, this sum can be calculated in more in this way, which are saying the probability of the vector, concrete vector of the case, which is the inverse of the probability factor, and the sum of the number of probabilities we have in the population. So this WDK, which is the number of individuals in domain D, for which the covariate pattern is equal to the second. So this quantity we have to know from some uh, administrative sources or, or from some external data sets to be able to apply the methodology of that spectrum. So in this case, the best spectrum of our quantity of interest is then defined as expectation, conditional expectation of the new bar, given the sample. So we have the sample, we have to calculate the conditional expectation. Under the category of setup, we can write it in the following form. So here we have the rate, we have the number of individuals in the concrete car, and this is the conditional expectation of the probability of new details. This expectation again involves some integrals, so we have to we have to approximate this by the situation. Then, uh, so this is so-called best vector. It depends on unknown parameter theta and theta. Okay. So again, we have to estimate theta and plug in the estimator, some complete estimator, and then the result is called empirical best predictor. So this method was proposed in the in 2003. So we adapted this methodology for our model and then derived the necessary formula to calculate the empirical best predictor. Of course, in a practical situation, you are not only interested in the point estimator of your quantity, but you also would like to know the error you are you have in your estimator. So you would like to try to know some mutual error, some vari variability of your estimator. So for this reason, we have to treat also we have to give also some measure of precision for our estimator. So one possibility is to calculate so-called mutual error. So in this case, it is possible to, to derive analytical formula for this square error. Again, with the derivation based on, on the work of Jan, 2003. So the mean square error of our estimator is, in fact, the expectation of the, of the, of the difference, of the square difference of our estimator and the true quantity. It can be distributed to two terms, and then, if these two we are really able to do some calculus and to calculate some approximation to the failure function and to approximate the mutual error. Again, the problem here is that there is the unknown theta. So we have to plug in again the estimate, which means that some bias uh, appears there. So another work of calculus to be done to calculate some bias correction. At the end, we are able to arrive to formula of such form. I will not give details about these three terms, where there is some bias correction, and this formula, this is an estimation of the order of all to the power, this is the power minus one. So, only what I wanted to say, because I will use a little practical application of simulation, we obtain two practical estimations, two estimators. This is the first estimator of the mutual error, which is the estimator without bias correction, and then more complicated estimator containing bias correction terms. This bias correction again is very complicated and must be must be simulated by Monte Carlo and be calculated on the So this is basically the methodology. And uh, the other possibility on the other hand, on the one hand, on the, uh, on the one hand, we have this uh, analytical estimator. The other possibility is to use bootstrap estimation of the new square error. So I will present just a uh, simple uh, description of the bootstrap estimator. So, how well can you estimate the new square error? So, what we do, we skip the model and we calculate the estimate of the parameter. And then we repeat D time. We generate a new bootstrap population from the estimated model, then the estimated parameter, 
Then we calculate the true quantity, so we have generated the population, so we know we calculate the true quantity. Then we extract the sample from the population, and for this sample, we calculate the estimate, the neutral estimate, and the entry to the predictor of the quantity of the And this is repeated in time, and at the end, as, as the output, we take the variability of our estimator with respect to the true value of the population. So this, in some sense, estimates the variability of our estimator. So we simply have a third estimator which has represent for estimating the mix of the error and the best predictor. And to study some practical behavior of the entry to best predictor, we have uh, carried out a simulation experiment with the child that started to investigate the behavior of our proposed entry to best predictor. So, uh, how does it move the population? So, we selected 30 small areas, 30 domains. The population size in each domain was 1,000. And we generated regressors from the three possible values. The probability is equal to 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.5, respectively. Uh, the regressors are on this side because of the application to real data. Then we can, you can imagine, for example, this can pay for inactive people, this for unemployed people, and this for employed people. So this is just the qualification of these three situations inactive, unemployed, and employed. We selected some values of parameter beta, the variable is the standard deviation of the random error. All the parameters are chosen uh, so that we are close to the real data uh, set. And we generate a set of random, random uh, effects. And at the end, we generate the target variable for the population. So the target, the target variable is y for the federal distributor with the probability given by this formula. So we have these out two regressors. We have some intercept and we have the random effect which gives some variability between the main. And the steps of the simulation experiment are the following. We receive small part of the generate the population, we calculate the true quantity, the true mean of the variable slide, then we select a simple random sample, the sample placement of size and D, and we calculate the entry to best predictor of our quantity and the bootstrap and analytic, analytic estimator of the mean square error. And at the end, after 1,000 repetitions, we calculate the entry to bias. So this is our estimate, this is the true quantity, and we repeat it every time. And the entry to mean square error of the entry to best predictor. So, in the first figure, we can see box plots. The box plots are over the area, so I have 30 areas, so this is this are 30 observations. So, these are box plots of biases of the entry to the predictor. So, as you can see, when we increase sample size from 5 to 40, you can see the predictors are almost unbiased and the variability decreases. Maybe more interesting is the mean square error. So this is the mean square error of the empirical best predictor. Again, you can see the speed and the strength of the uh, mean square error of the estimator is increasing some of the time. But maybe the most important thing is how we are able to estimate the mean square error of our estimator. So I will present this is the next figure. So uh, now we have a small area. So we have 30 areas, 30 domains. And what we can see, the blue line is the true, or is the mean of the true error we have done in the simulation. So this is something like two quantity. The three uh, remaining are the estimates. So let me start with this blue one. So the blue one, this is the analytic estimator without bias correction. So we can see we are underestimating slightly the mean square error. The last one is the bootstrap estimator. So we are very close, and the bootstrap method works very similar to the analytic estimator, but without correction. If we apply and derive the formula and apply the complicated bias correction test, 
then we see, okay, the rise was corrected, but the correction was too high. So we are overestimating them. But we have only 10 observations per area, so the sample size is very low. So let us see what will happen if we increase the sample size. So if I increase the sample size to 20, then we can see that the bias correction pattern starts to work. Now the bias correction is perfect, and we are on the, the quantity. The other two methods, with our bias correction and neutral estimator, are working better with the large sample size, but still we are under estimating. So it seems that this is the best candidate, the estimation with bias correction pattern. But here we have encountered a serious problem. Computational problems with the estimator. I'll try to explain it. There are some computational difficulties with the analytic means for error estimator because in the formula appears terms of such time. So we have approximated the integral, but the problem is the sum. Because we have to sum over all vectors from such sets, where the set is set of all vectors of length and d, which are composed of 0 and 1. Such that the sum of the element is J. And this must be done for all J. So this is in fact the select from any position, J position, that is required. So this set, the size of the set is NB over J. And this is the big complication. Because for example, if I have 40 observations in one domain, then I have 10 to the power 11 of two months. And for each month, I have to approximate integral, and I have to repeat this several times. So this is almost impossible to use it in practice. I can use it in simulation because, you know, you have to go, you have to, to denominate all the set because you have to go element by element. So you have to have the set somewhere to store. So I can do it for simulation. When I have 40 elements in each domain, I do just one. But in practical application, when in each domain you have a different number of observations, and the number of positions goes to 400, for example, then it's impossible to use this method. So for this reason, at the end, we decided, okay, it works for small sample sizes, but it's almost uh, unusable for large sample sizes. So we decided to use the bootstrap method and to see how does it work if you increase the sample size. So if I increase the sample size to 40, then we can see the bootstrap also works quite well and estimates quite well the bootstrap value. So this is the reason in the real application, I will use only bootstrap estimator of the square element because we are not able to calculate the analytical approximation. So uh, application to the data. So we have about total data from the Spanish Reading Commission survey from the year 2012 in the Autonomous Society of Valencia. And we are interested in estimating the domain power theory from the power theory proportion. So we consider 26 domains, which are Tabarca, which are in the sample. The total sample size is 2,378. The smallest area is 12 records, and the largest area is 441 individuals. The population size of Valencia is around 5 million people. Uh, we also use as the aggregated data, we will need this total population pattern, so we take them from the Spanish labor force survey from 2012. So we start two data sets used for this application. The Spanish living condition survey provides information regarding the household income during the last few years. From this household income, we calculate the so called equivalent personal income. So these are some rules of EBOSPAD how to calculate equivalent personal income. This is calculated and then it's assigned to each member of the household. So this is for a little more situation because the data could be better if we would have the information for individuals. But we have only individuals on the, on the household level, so each member of the household has at the end the same personal income. And the power to this is then the proportion of people for which this personal income is below so-called poverty threshold. So for example, the Spanish poverty threshold in 2012 was 6,840 euros per year. So people who were under this, this quantity, with this, with their personal income, they were considered as poor people. So under this setup, we can define our power series, the sum 
of my habits. Why? Not the variable why. Take value one. If the income is zero, the product is zero, and it's zero otherwise. So, in fact, this is the reason we have now the zero one variable, and we can use our family model. So, we propose to use the following model. So, we have the value distribution with, again, random effect for small area for the domain. And again, we assume that these random effects are uh, standard normal distribution. Our model, uh, the, the final model we get is this one. So, the logic function of the probability is equal to some intercept. Then, pressure vector is uh, employed, it means if the person is employed or not, unemployed. So this takes one which is employed, this takes one which is unemployed, and this takes one which is connected. The intercept says say that then for the rest of the population, the child child. And we have this number of them. So we use this this probability because we have information for them. For the whole uh, community of Valencia, we the aggregated aggregate data for this information pattern. If we uh, look on the estimates of the parameters of the model, so we have an estimate, we can observe all of them are significant in the model. And uh, let's look on the explanation, for example, beta 1, you can see it's negative, so it means the more people are employed, the less. They have the probability to be poor. So it corresponds to our expectation. And the same happens here. If they are unemployed, then the beta increases the probability of being poor. So it corresponds to our expectation uh, of, of the model. To see some residuals, so these are fields uh, of residuals uh, sorted by the way and the way So we do not observe an expected pattern or a specific if you look on the normality of failure, we have the DHT in the end. As you know, we have been writing our model, we have been regression, so it's going to be able to be completely perfectly normal. So it looks that uh, it's quite fine. Okay, here I have some sexual observations, which are in the same time the program, so this is some small format over here. So here is the problem, the outlier, in some sense. Here, this is, this is children or child, and you can see in this, there are 33 observations, and 13 of them are poor, so more than 50%. So, this is the outline, normally, normally, the, uh, the poor, the percentage of poor people from 20 or less person. And on the other side, here, these are inactive people, there are like 30 of them, and no one was marked as poor. So, in, in this sense, this, some observations are outlined. If you look at the result of our prediction, so in this figure, we can see empirical prediction and direct estimator of the proportion of the positive proportion. And now the area, the domain, are sorted by sample size. So, we start with the smallest one, and we are going to go to the larger. So, what we can observe? What is important here that the empirical best predictor stays in the same pattern as the direct estimator for large sample sizes. Because for large sample sizes, the direct estimator should be, should be working uh, well. So this is okay. And here, in this area, we can see that our empirical best prediction is more stable than the direct line to the end. Okay, for example, here, all observations by the zero, so we can zero, but the empirical best predictor can can take the information from the model and can estimate some probability of this tool. And uh, concerning the mean square error, so here we can see the mean square error, boost of estimate of the mean square error of both methods. So again, we can see for large sample sizes they are comparable, but for small sample sizes, we decrease the, the variance of the estimator by using the outlay data of uh, unemployment. So this is the first part of the talk, and in fact, this is after summarized uh, in the paper, in our paper with Domingo, which was accepted uh, last month, so this was the first, first part of the talk. And 
now I would like to continue with a little more complicated model. So we follow the complicated filters. And we complicate the model in the following uh, way that we include some temporal, temporal, uh, temporal time. So now, the target variable y, we have domain d, time, instant t, and individual k. So we have three digits now. And again, we suppose the distribution, the conditional distribution is the distribution with the probability, and we have two sets of random effects. Again, we use the logistic regression, so we have the logistic, logistic function. This part is the same, except the time in the year. And what we include more is this random effect of time. So we have some random effects which have some variability with respect to domain, and here we have some random effect with this variability with respect to domain and time. So in this sense, it's more complicated model. Again, we have two random effects are normally distributed in the zero one distribution, and variables y are independent condition to the vector y. Now, the vector of unknown parameters has three terms the vector beta and the two variants components t1 to 2. And since we do not uh, apply the uh, analytic estimation of this uh, error, we change the method and now we use the Laplace approximation of the log like this. So again, the log like this function contains uh, integrals which cannot be evaluated specifically. So we use a Laplace approximation of the integral. We get some approximation of the log like this and then we maximize the log like this. So this is the method how it can be estimated parameters in this generalized dynamic model. Now, our parameter of interest is again the mean, but now in domain D and time T. So we have like several sets of data, and we are wishing to estimate the quantity in domain time interest. So if we know by SDT and RDT the samples and non samples individual, so we have the population, we have the expected sample, the sample is noted by the D, and the rest of the population by RDT. Then the average of the predictor of our quantity of interest and the speed can be divided into these two terms. So in the first term, there is the sum of observations we have in our hands. So this is the sample. Here we sum over the rest of the population in, in the area of the inside team, and here we have to use the predictor. So this is the best predictor defined here. So again, it's conditional expectation of the probability given the sample y. So this is again the methodology of the predictor, and we have to estimate somehow this, this probability. Again, this involves some high dimension integral, so we have to use multiple estimation. But again, we encounter some problem here because to calculate this probability in the rest of population, if I go back to the model, we need to know the x. Without the X, we are not able to calculate the probability. So, we would need some census file and know the X variable for the whole population, which is not possible to form. So, this, the only solution is how to overcome the problem to be happy and to have only categorical variables. If we have only categorical variables, so again, we have to assume this A takes some finite uh, number of values, then we can overcome the problem. Because the sum over the rest of the population of this sample can be written in this form. Where the Q, DCK, is again the probability that the individual will have, uh, will have value 1 if the regressor is equal to DCK. So this can be calculated in this problem. And these are again the number of individuals which are not in the sample, in the area of the entire sample, for which the regressor is equal to this case. Is that case. So we have to know from somewhere this quantity, this size of coverage quantity. And this is what we use in the application to the integrator of the study for the first survey. So we have the number. So we know the number of unemployed people in the main view and find these from some external data. But just if it is enough from the number for the whole area, not for each individual. So in this case, we can again rewrite the predictor 
of the meaning of y and t. And then we have again the two the sum is known. And here we have the application of the vector of the of the word is new which is uh, given the concept. Again, it must be approximated by the way. And as it depends on the unknown parameter theta, again we have to estimate and to plug in the parameter theta and you obtain so called empirical best predictor of the meaning y is to that as well. Uh, just for illustration, how complicated it is to calculate this term. I think that formula it can be shown that it is equal to uh, this fraction, where the term in the nature has such form. So it's uh, time plus one dimensional integral of this term, which cannot be evaluated, so you have to approximate, you have to approximate the divisor again. So here we use Monte Carlo to approximate this integration. So even if it is empirical predictor, it's not completely easy to calculate it, but it can be done. Other possibility, more easy, is to so-called plug-in estimator. So we have, in fact, I have the same sum, but instead of calculating empirical best prediction of this vector, I just calculate the, the plug-in estimator of this vector. And that it means I take the formula and I plug in the estimate which I got from the Lapas approximation method. So the Lapas approximation method gives us estimate of beta and t, and these are predictors of v, y, and v, t. So this is so-called plug-in estimator. We just estimate our new formula. We plug in into the formula, and we have very easy formula how to get some approximation of the, of the variable interval. So I will compare behavior of these two estimators. So I'm very good predictor and plug-in estimator in the simulation study and in the application to this data. Concerning estimation of the mean square error, in both cases, I will use parametric mean square. So I described the method before, so it, it is the same, so I will not repeat, repeat how, that, how the mean square works. So then let us see some simulation experiments. So target, again, is to investigate the behavior of the empirical best predictor in the plug-in estimator. Now, we selected the population to be more close to the real data sample. So we again take 30 domains, time inside 2, so we have 2 time inside, and the population size is now 200,000, so it corresponds to the, to the domain of our data sample. And the sample size will be 10, 20, 40, and 80. Again, we generate regressors from the three possible values with probability. Again, we can look at it doing an unemployed, employed, and inactive people with this probability. And these are generated at time instant one. So we can generate this regressor at time instant one. Concerning the time instant two, the current state, the technical variables, are generated using Markov chain in the kernel with such probability of, uh, of transition. It means if the person was classified as, in, as time one as unemployed, the probability that it will be unemployed again is 0 for seven. Probability that from unemployed comes to employed 0 for 2 and from unemployed to inactive 0 for 1. So this is some statistical matrix. It's uh, trying to estimate the probability of transition between these three possible states. So we wanted to have the variables dependent, so we generated the, the coverage it's time to by this amount of change uh, transition probability. And so concerning the model, we again select some, uh, some values of the parameter theta, t1 to 2. Again, these are very similar to the values which we will obtain from the real data set. We generate the two sets of random effects for domain and domain in time. And we generate the observations of interest from vendor distribution with this probability. So again, we have the uh, intercept to regressor, first set of random effects and second set of random effects. And I will compare behavior of three estimators. The first two are the empirical perspectors in the plugin. I will compare them at the time instant 2. So we are interested in estimating the probability proportion at the time instant 2. 
taking into account also data from time to time. One. So we have some small data for estimation. And to see if we gain something with estimating the temporal or temporal model, the third estimator will be the empirical best predictor based on the previous model, which means non temporal model and taking into account just data from time into two. So these two estimators take into account all data T1 to 2, but I represent estimate for the second time period, and this estimate is the previous from the beginning of the presentation, it takes into account only the data from T2 to 2. So comparing the two, we will see what we gain if we include this temporal dependency model. Okay, simulation again, we repeat 7,000 times, we generate population, calculate the city quantity, we select a single sample, and calculate the empirical estimate of the budget estimator and the empirical estimator based on the time to be only. And similarly to the previous case, we again present as a result the empirical bias of our estimate and empirical means to an error of the estimate. We can see some figures. So this figure presents uh, biases for the three decals. So again, you can see here the sample size 10, 20, 40, and 80. And the first uh, so box plot is for EDP, the second for budget, and the third for EDP. So with increasing sample size, we can see that the EDPs are almost unbiased. This is not the case of the budget estimator. Which, as we plug in the estimate, we can really do with some bias. And the plug in remains biased. So here there is some bias, which we reach the influence also for the mean square error. Concerning the mean square error of the estimator, so the same, the same setup with box plot over area, 10, 20, 40, and the observation. So we can see in all the cases the empirical best predictor taking into account two times in terms of the best one. And the plug in is doing the work. For us, especially here, we can see the empirical square error of empirical best predictor and the system square error of plug in. So we get something uh, by introducing this, this uh, empirical best prediction methodology. And concerning the, the time effect, we can see what, what we have gained in the dark blue and the slide blue. There is some gain of precision. But with increasing sample size, it seems that if we have enough data, then it is not necessary to get different times and also. But for small sample sizes, there is a visible gain of precision with improving this uh, random uh, temporal balance in the model. And uh, to show the methodology of the real data, I will uh, again revisit the application to real data. Now, we will include another set. So we'll include also 2013 predictive information survey data. And we will be estimating in the domain parity proportion in the year 2013. So again, we have 26 domains, which are the Comarca. And the sample size of the 2030 data is 2,512. The smallest are at the record, the largest 400. And population size, again, around 5 million people. And to calculate the empirical best predictors, we use aggregated data, the total of correct patterns, and we will use again the Spanish labor for salary, this time from 2013. So we would like to estimate the parity proportion, which are in fact again the means of the variable y, where y again is 0 or 1, if the people is considered true or not, depending on the parity proportion and the personal income. So this is the same setup. So we can again use the proposed model. We have better distribution data, two sets of random effects, which are IID and zero one. And the model now is again we use the correct endpoint, unemployed. In that case, this appears now because it was not uh, important in the model. And but what was important was here. So this is indicated variable of the year. If the year is 2013, it takes value 1, and it's 0 for 6, 2012. And then these two sets of random effects. Concerning the parameter estimate, again, it's very similar. 
here you can see if the people are employed, the probability of being poor is lower. If they are unemployed, the probability of being poor is higher. So this is the same as before. Again, all the parameters are important in the model. And here you can see the estimate of the variance parameters and the other effects. Concerning the residual studies of this model, so here you can see again the previous residual calculated for domain, time, distance, and discovery of class, and all the different. So again, we cannot see an explained pattern, so we think okay. But now we decide also to check the big assumptions. Because we have a lot of random effects, we assume this, but we have real data. So we would like to see if this is reasonable assumption. So we have calculated the values from the Rafasa approximation with predicted values. And here we can see C2 for the left one is for the random effect of the range. So we can see it quite well, approximated by the norm of the CD term. And this is the random effect of the B and C. Again, the quite good correspondence. We have to use the protocol uh, the commodore will not have to set the normality and uh, in both cases in the easily not rigid procedures. So it seems that the assumption that the random effect of normality to the one can be taken to account and it's not uh, some contradiction with the data. So this was like like checking our model and now the results. So here you can see uh, direct estimator again in blue, empirical, best estimator now in green, and the plugin estimator in red. So again, here you can see for larger sample sizes, the empirical best prediction takes the, the pattern of the direct estimator. Here it is more stable for small sample sizes, while the plugin estimator looks to be a little over Again, much much lower than, than the direct one, for example. Again, the domains are sorted with respect to the sample size. And concerning the mean square error, we see many more informatic figures. So these are bootstrap estimates of the mean square error of all three estimators. So again, you can see for small sample sizes, the increase the precision loss. And uh, concerning the plugin and MVP, the EDP is all time better than the plugin estimator for all the sample sizes. And the important for large sample sizes is better or comparable with direct line, while the plugin, because it has some bias, is bigger than Okay, and uh, to conclude, uh, we try to see uh, the differences between years. So we try to study just the differences between poverty proportions in year 2013 and 2012 in the community of Valencia. So here we can see the differences. So again, we can see the direct estimator is very unstable for small sample sizes. On the other hand, plugin is very stable. And somewhere in the middle is the empirical best prediction, the green one, the green, green one, which stays the pattern of various estimators for large sample sizes and here more stable. We see all of them are below zero, so we, we can conclude from this that the poverty proportion decreased in the community of Valencia between 2012 and 2013, at least from this number given by the methodology for the start of the poverty threshold. Okay, and to conclude it all, so what to say at the end, so from the, from the work can be seen that the empirical best prediction, the methodology can be used and it's applicable also to small R estimation real program. Because in the, in, the, in the paper of Young, they only propose the methodology, they derive from multiple persons for uh, for uh, properties. <laughs> uh, and uh, they show everything for large and for like, uh, so there was no simulation and no application to the data. So it can be applied to build data for that. Also, it can be seen that the metric best prediction has lower biases and use of errors as a plugin estimator, and that the use of temporal information increases the precision estimates, especially for small sample sizes, than 
We have some time for making questions. Uh, I will say, well, I understand. Entiendo que el, el EDP2 eh, es el mismo que en el primer experimento de simulación, ¿no? O sea, es únicamente restringido a lo que tiene. Sí, sí, sí. Todo eso es la cosa de un año de semestre. Y no, el estimador no ve, ni el modelo, ni el estimador no ve los datos de semestre. Todo al fin y al cabo funciona muy bien por lo, por lo que se ve en los experimentos de simulación se acerca mucho al, al EVP al EVP la sí, sí, sí. por la de Santos Pai sí sí gracias bueno, podrías comentarnos algo, Tomás, sobre eh, lo, el software que has utilizado para esto y, y también hacer algún comentario sobre los algoritmos de ajuste, porque en un modelo se utilizó uno uh -huh. en el momento uh -huh. y otro y en el segundo un uh -huh. algoritmo distinto. Sí, sí, sí. En el primer caso, no se metió en el momento y fue programado por Yas y Matlab, por mí, por Matlab. But uh, we use this method of simulating moments. Uh, the main reason was that then we wanted to use this semantic approximation of the initial error, which was also proposed by Young, for this method, basically. So this was the reason we used the method of simulating moments. But then I changed to R. And as we decide, it's not to, to calculate the analytical estimator because it's not for use to be practiced. So we decided to change to Laplace algorithm. And for this model, the Laplace algorithm is in fact uh, already programmed in R. So we can use the R package uh, for, for this one. This model can be fitted by R, by the package. If we, what was the, the next step, if we would assume some index, some different abstraction between the numerals, then you can use R as well. So the R and the index, this is the last model you can fit with R. If you add some more, uh, for example, see some dependence, I don't know, uh, R1 independent or something like that, then you have to program all those other methods by the time. Okay, more questions? Then simple words. Thank you.